The northern arm of the Baltic Sea is called the Gulf of Bothnia. It is bordered in the west by the high coast of Sweden and in the east by the Kvarken Archipelago in Finland. The coastline here is continuously rising out of the sea, a geological process known as post-glacial rebound. Everywhere you can see special geological formations carved by the ice sheet that once covered the region. The high coast and the Kvarken archipelago have been named a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. A World Heritage Site is a place, an object, or an area that shows, in a unique way, the history of the Earth and of humankind. The High Coast and Kvarken Archipelago are the best place in the world to observe and understand the concept of post-glacial rebound. Which means that the Earth's crust is returning to its original position after having been pressed down by heavy glaciers over a series of glacial periods. Tall islands, narrow, deep bays, smooth rock faces and deep shorelines are characteristic of the high coast. In contrast, the Kvarken Archipelago is the exact opposite, a mosaic of low islands, sunken rock, moraine ridges and shallow bays. The World Heritage Site shows how the glacial periods, post-glacial rebound, and the forces of the sea have affected the countryside and its flora and fauna in a way that makes it unique in all the world. The difference in height in this region occurred long before the glacial periods and post-glacial rebound. The bedrock here is very old. Scientists believe that the high and low coastlines were created by the movement of magma in the Earth's core, pressing upwards and creasing the Earth's crust into steep mountains. Kvarken Archipelago remained flat. Over the course of millennia, both the high and the low coast have been shaped by a series of glacial periods. During the most recent glacial period, called the Weichel Glacial Stage, the inland ice sheet was thickest over Kvarken and the high coast. In some places, it was up to three kilometers thick, a heavy blanket pressing down the Earth's crust, in some places to a depth of one kilometer. temperatures began to rise and the ice began to melt about 18,000 years ago, this pressure was relieved and the Earth's crust began to rise upwards towards its original position again. Initially, this happened very quickly, nearly 10 meters in a hundred years. These days, the uplift is much slower, about 80 centimeters per hundred years. In several places, you can see the results of post-glacial rebound on the high coast and the Kvarken archipelago. The islands that were visible above the sea surface when the ice sheet melted are now the world's highest coastline. 
At the peak of Mount Skulabugat, you can see where the waterline was 10,000 years ago, now 286 meters above the current sea level. Some of the hills along the high coast are capped with glacial debris, called till, which allows forest to grow on the peaks, while the wave-washed hillsides are bare. Walking from the modern shoreline is a trip back in time, as you pass the traces of historical shorelines at various heights in the rough terrain. As the ice sheet receded, it scraped loose rocks and boulders, gravel, sand and clay, carrying them along with it and depositing them elsewhere. This left its mark in the form of glacial striations, shingle fields, erratics, sea caves and kettle holes. Till is a type of soil consisting of rocks, gravel, sand and clay. As the land rose, the till was manipulated by the forces of water and ice, resulting in many different formations. The most prominent formations in the Kvarkan archipelago are the digir, or washboard moraines, which formed large fields on land and sea. The landscape here is continuously changing shape. Due to post-glacial rebound, new islands rise out of the sea, others expand and merge together, and bays become separated from the sea, becoming floods, glow lakes, and eventually inland lakes or wetlands. These changes are easily visible in the flat landscape. In the space of a lifetime, a person can see how shoreline is transformed into inland, Every year, a square kilometer of new land arises in the Kvarkan archipelago. That's the size of 150 football pitches. Plants, animals and people must adapt to the changes brought about by post-glacial rebound. The water in the Baltic is brackish today. Not many species have been able to adapt to an environment somewhere in between salt water and fresh water. People have been living in the high coast region ever since the ice sheet melted. They followed the shoreline as it moved farther and farther out, supporting themselves through fishing, seal hunting and agriculture. People have lived in the Kvarkan archipelago for about 1,000 years. Even before that, the archipelago was used for fishing and sealing. People wondered how it was possible that new land kept forming. They thought the water was receding and sought answers in the biblical story of Noah's Ark and the Great Flood. Not until the late 19th century did scientists discover the concept of post-glacial rebound. These days, nearly 8,000 people live in this World Heritage Area. Visitors from the entire world can enjoy the beautiful, barren and many times completely untouched countryside of the high coast and the Kvarkan archipelago. The land uplift is stable and the traces of the glacial period are enduring. No one knows exactly how much more the land is going to rise before the high coast and the Kvarkan archipelago have returned to their original form. There may be 14 meters left, or perhaps 50, or even 250. If the uplift continues at the current rate, 8 millimeters per year, Sweden and Finland may be joined by dry land in just over 2,000 years.
World Heritage Sites are part of human identity. The unique geology and the post-glacial rebound in the High Coast and Quarkin Archipelago region is a valuable heritage of our past, a heritage we live with and will pass on to future generations. World Heritage Sites like this one are in the interest of all humanity. They are ours to enjoy and to preserve with great consideration and respect for nature's wonders.